Today, we pick out fabrics for our art quilt. I will show you several examples to help you on your journey. Let's get started. So when doing your first art quilt, you wanna stick, stick with simple lines and not too many colors. You wanna keep it simple so you get comfortable with it. You don't have to stick with your, use your art picture, your inspiration picture to guide you on the colors you wanna pick. But if you don't like the colors in it, you don't have to stick with those colors. You can totally change it up. What you need to look for is your tones. Look for your darks, look for your lights, and make sure that if you are changing, say maybe a yellow to an orange, but it's light, pick a light orange, not a dark orange. All right, you wanna stick with the tones. Look for the darks and the lights to go with the matching that. And you want lights and darks and mediums. Um, humans tend to go in the middle tone a lot. We pick a lot of middle tone fabrics. Um, a lot of my fabrics in my stash are middle tones. I have to purposely make myself buy light colors and dark colors because um, we just don't naturally gravitate to those. But they are what make, the light and the dark tones make our quilts exciting. They make them pop. So make sure that you're sticking with the tones, not necessarily the colors. If you want to change up the colors, you have that, um, that freedom to do that as the artist. With my wave quilt, when I made it, I kind of was going off the cuff with it anyway, because I changed how I was gonna make it midway. But I didn't ever pick out my background. I just kept going because I couldn't think of what, how I was gonna deal with it, because it was a really big background and I was using all hand-painted fabrics and I didn't have a piece big enough to, be, to work for my background. We'll talk about backgrounds and that more in the next video, but I wish I would have planned that background and that color before I started, but it worked out. So behind me, I have several examples of art quilts that I've done, and I'm going to talk about how I picked out the fabrics that I did and the colors that I did for those projects. This was an art quilt project that was completely made up in my brain. I didn't even have, I had a tree in my yard that was my inspiration. So I wanted, it was, the tree was winter, so I wanted it to have the feel of winter. So I went with white fabrics, but I didn't go completely white because I felt like that was boring. So I picked out a batik that has gray on white, and I also was making these little squares. Um, so I added a darker gray batik in with it so that I, it almost gave a feel of branches in the background. Um, I then ended up couching brown yarns and gluing uh, felted wool balls onto it. So those were my other colors. I knew I wanted reddish berries. I knew I wanted brown stems. So even though they're not fabrics, though that is part of my color palette that I picked. I, when I was online, I ended up finding berries that were not just red. I could pick orange and uh, red and burgundy. So I picked a variety of those because I thought that would just give it some more pizzazz. With this quilt, this is one of my shattered vases, and I had picked out, this is a hand-painted fabric by me, and I loved the variegation of it. Uh, I, I just thought it was really beautiful. So I picked it out first, and then I additioned that fabric with other fabrics to find my background. And I ended up keeping it simple with just, I mean, I could have pieced the background, but I decided I didn't want that because there was so much movement going on. And I found this perfect, really dark batik that I had in my stash. And I love the little bits of orange and pink that were in it that this fabric picked that up and it just made it pop. And I loved that. So this, this is a really simple quilt with only two fabrics in it, but lots of different colors. If you're going to pick a variegated fabric for your um, art quilt, sometimes they can be tricky because they might have a very quick variegation where they change quickly, or it may have a really big variegation where it is red for a long time and then it changes to orange, something like that. They can be tricky, so make sure it fits within the size of your pattern. Take your pattern, like if I were to use this pattern and I wanted this piece to fit here, I would take that and kind of hold it up and go, okay, does my variegation fit within that? Um, or maybe if I'm using it for hair, does my, do I want my hair lighter? Do I want it more darker? Um, if you're not using variegated fabric, then you don't have to worry about that. 
but because I use a lot of my hand painted fabrics and they have a lot of variegation, I do audition them a lot. In this last quilt, this was my sunflower quilt that I showed you in the last video, and I picked fabrics that were, of course, sunflower colors. I went with lots of different greens because I was doing a collage quilt. That was my purpose, was to have lots of different greens, but I stuck with a yellow, yellow green um, mostly. And then with my yellow petals, I wanted to pick like six or seven different yellows, but I wanted different colors. I wanted, I wanted different tones, excuse me. So I wanted some medium tones, some light tones, and some really dark tones like this orangey red for the shadows. Um, my middle, I ended up going with an orange that had a little bit of color change in it, but it read mostly solid because I didn't want it to be too busy because I knew this texture would be busy and all of these colors would be busy. I didn't want this to steal the show from my petals, even though all the texture ended up stealing the show, but I was okay with that. My background, I didn't pick till the very end. I had my collaged uh, sunflower all on a piece of parchment. So I was able to pick it up and place it on different backgrounds and audition the different blues and I ended up picking a, a sky blue with clouds because I felt like it, it matched my inspiration picture that I was going and I, I just thought it really was beautiful that yellow and blue juxtaposition was just beautiful so a lot of times it's just me trying out things it's me holding fabrics up to see what I feel really works and looks really beautiful with this project I saw the picture and then it reminded me of this set of fabric uh, fat quarters that I had purchased last fall that I loved and I've been waiting to figure out what I wanted to do with them. And I rarely buy collections of fabrics, um, but I did this one because I just thought they were so fun together. But then I realized I only needed five fabrics for my rays. And so I eliminated these four because this one was I didn't really love the colors in it and these ones were too simple and plain so I removed those and I just stuck with these four but I needed one more so I just pulled out of my stash this um, cream or white with some yellow gold on it and I feel like it isn't too audacious I've got this one, these, this really fancy one, an audacious one, and this one. And so I wanted something a little calm, but that brought out more of the yellows. And so that's why I went with this one. And that's how I picked my colors for the heavenly rays that are coming down. I also, for her background, I decided to use one of my, because it was very watercolor, I think the whole painting is a watercolor. So because of that, I wanted to use my hand painted fabrics. My hand painted fabrics are very reminiscent of watercolors, watercolor paintings. Um, if you'd like to learn how to paint your own, hand paint your own fabrics, you can um, find the link below and I do an online class and I also teach classes here in the studio. It's a lot of fun and it just takes your art quilts to another dimension. And it's one thing that I love to do. So I picked out this one that is very peachy pink. It's got variegation in it. We talked about that. So you can audition with your pattern and place, you know, kind of place it over and go, oh yeah, that pink, it's kind of going to be hidden behind these rays. So do I want to turn it around and maybe put it at the bottom? Well, it looks like a lot of it will be hidden underneath her dress. So do I want light up here? Do I want the pink down here? I'm, you can kind of audition and figure out where you want that. I love using um, parchment paper and stuff like that because you can see through it enough to kind of test out your colors. Um, and that's that's really helpful. I, I think I like this more at the top. I might change my mind by next week <laughs> when I work on it. I also picked out a, this is some hand painted brown. Um, for her hair. I tried some other browns for her hair that were commercial fabrics, but I felt like they were too dark and I don't want her hair to be the focal point. I want these fun flowers, uh, flower fabrics to be the focal point. And so I picked out this lighter, more dulled brown. I'm going to be adding to it, uh, maybe painting on it. That will be in our embellishing video coming up. Um, I also am going to pick out some flesh colored, probably from my hand painted fabrics for her face and hands. 
And then I've also picked this white, uh, white on white commercial fabric that will be, it's just got some, some delicate lines in it. It will be her dress. So that is the fabrics, how I pick, came to pick out the fabrics for this project. If you have any questions, please place them in the comments below. Here at Experience the Quilt, you can learn art education and we help you to finish your fabulous quilts with edge-to-edge -edge quilting or cozy couching. Place your order at our website to finish those unfinished quilts. Or you can drop them off to us or ship them to us. We really hope you like this video. Please feel free to like, subscribe, and share. Let's get your quilt on. <laughs>